Hello, I'm Joan Manson of Manson Fine Art, and I thank you for joining me today. I've increased the time for this video. It actually took me two hours to complete this drawing in colored pencil of a goldfinch. These are all the materials I had at my disposal. Woodless colored pencils, Zerwitt Lightfast paper, additional colored pencils, my reference photo of the goldfinch in the background, and some mineral spirits. This is a 7 by 10 inch paper from Zerwitt. It's the first time that I'm using this, and it's made specifically for using with colored pencils. I'm using Tacon brushes to apply the oil. And this is my final drawing. Today, I'm going to be working with two new materials, Darwin's Light Fast Paper and Ashley um, Nicole Arts Woodless Pencils. They're colored pencils, and I have never used woodless colored pencils before. I am going to be working with this reference photo. This is a um, goldfinch. So I'm re I downloaded it from Reference Photos USA. The, um, excuse me, the pencils, 36 cents, set, come in three tubes with the beautiful, beautiful colors and the exciting thing is that you can use all of the pencils. I used woodless graphite pencils and I found those very interesting and enjoyable to use and I'm looking forward to seeing how these handle. If I'm not pleased with what I'm getting, if I feel like I need something else, I have all of these. I have um, Derrick Light Fast Pencils, a small set of 12. I have uh, 36 the Fabric Castell Polychromos. I have a 20 pencil set of a Karen Dosh Luminous Pencils. And I have the Derwent Drawing Pencils. So I think I'm pr covered pretty well. In case something doesn't work just fine or if I think I need a finer detailing. Um, I have already drawn my image. This is, oh, this is a, um, I think I can remember the size of the paper, 7 by 10 inch paper, and it's 100% um, cotton. Uh, this is 140 pound paper, acid free, and of course, like that, as it says. I have darkened the areas where the pencil coloring is darkened, and left the areas where there's white exposed uh, and lighter uh, shades exposed, much lighter, so I can erase them more easily. I have a variety of erasers. That's my life. Um, this is a Factus black eraser. It's supposed to be for colored pencils. This is a uh, Razoplast from uh, Statler. I also, should I really need it, have gum erasers. The um, the needed eraser isn't necessarily my favorite, but you can make it in points and work in, in small areas, and you can dab with it, which is always helpful. Uh, and at some point, I'm going to be using odorless uh, mineral thinner. This is mineral spirits. This one is from U.S. Art Supply. I have a teeny tiny cup that used to hold yogurt. And that's where I'm going to put when I'm ready. I have a couple of tack line brushes, and they're just a little bit stiffer. They're, you know, they're kind of the stiffness of an acrylic brush. I have a filbert, which is like my favorite shape of the brushes in the world. And then this one is a flat edge. I'm not sure which I'll need or if I'll need both. And I have selected all of my colors in the woodless pencil. I'm not going for a lot of blending in this case because I'm just experimenting. I will be doing summing some. I have the, um, 
it's, it's, you can't really read it well, but this is a golden yellow. And this is cardinal red, which seems appropriate for a bird. I also have a lighter red. This is permanent red. For the body, I have the um, okra, the brown okra. I have white. I have gray. I have a brownish black. I'll be using those in shading. And I have black. And then I also have uh, peach color. And the peach I'm going to be using on, on the legs and possibly into the white a little bit. Not sure. Put those over here for the moment. Put these over here for the moment. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do has nothing to do with the colored pencils. I'm going to use my embossing tool. Uh, embossing tools are used for the act of embossing, which I am not very good at. Um, but this is a technique that I learned a couple of years ago, watching YouTube videos and other people. I, I find occasionally I do reinvent the wheel or come up with something um, that most people don't do. But I saw other people using an embossing tool, a nail, a uh, retracted pen or mechanical pencil to create hash lines so that when the pencil goes over an area, it doesn't do the background. It leaves that white. Well, I'm going to do that here in this white section and in this section right here as well. Not in all of them, but in, in a few of them. I'm not going to do it with the beak. I just, just in the areas where there are feathers, and I'm not going to be able to make that distinction with um, on the white. So I do have a white pencil. This paper is off-white, so I'm thinking I'll lighten it a bit. And put that up there. And, and there's white going around here. I'm not going to touch that. But when I come up here, I'm just pressing back and forth. And I'm, cri I'm crisscrossing. I realize that you can see my hand moving, but you're not going to be able to see the impressions I'm making. And then I'm going to come back over here as well, and just some areas where it overlaps the ochre color. And where it overlaps here. Okay. I'm going to start with the black markings. Oops, there's one more section I want to do. Um, it's over this black wing right here. Start with the black color pencil and then work the same way that I would.
a very small area. And just doing small marks. Now, the eyes are very difficult to see. There's no reflection in them. See the original reference photo? There is no reflection in those eyes. So I'm going to put one there. And Now I'm going to bring over the gray pencil to fill in the eye. And then the black to bring in the shadow and the edges. And leaving that spot so I have green in both eyes. And I can lighten it up later on so it stands out a little bit more. Now I'm using the odorless mineral spirits on a tacklon brush, blending in the black feathers. This is how I make sure I fill in all of the white of the paper. This will fill in all the crevices so that we won't have the issue of the texture of the paper, paper coming through unless that's what I want. And I'm just blending it down a little bit because the red will reflect some of that black as well. And using the black pencil. And when I say pencil, most of the time I'm talking about the woodless pencils. I won't bring any of the regular colored pencils in to play until I'm closer to finished. I have to let that dry for a bit and I'm going to move on to working on the body. This is the uh, brown okra. And I'm working in a circular motion and you can see that the streaks that I made with the embossing tool are showing up so that there are white feathers popping up in that okra. It really is a handy trick.
you can overdo it so you do have to be careful when you're when you're using this method and it does work beautifully on furred animals as well it doesn't work as an afterthought and it really doesn't work very well when you're laying down a color and then bringing another on top of it hoping to leave that lighter color up um, i have tried it i've not had success with it although you could try it and find that you do I'm just continuing with the brown ochre, working on the back wings. I'm just coloring on lightly. I'm building up slowly. Now, of course, this is two times, so I'm building up a lot more slowly <laughs> in reality. Now I'm bringing in the brownish black to build up the shadow areas in these feathers. Now I'm bringing in the mineral spirits with my brush. Don't want your brush to be soaking and you do want to press with um, apply pressure to to blend in the pencil to the paper. The idea here is that you are going to fill in all of the paper so that you won't have the graininess and the texture of the paper showing through and interfering with the pencil marks. I'm using a luminance pencil, uh, another a brown, because I want a little, I don't have something quite brown enough in my woodless pencils. And there wasn't any particular reason that I chose the luminance. It just happened to be I saw the color I wanted and went with it. And all the color pencils have variations in their texture and in their coverage. And if I pick one up and find that it's not giving me the coverage I need, I look for a color matching or close to it and use it instead from another set. I'm always happy to switch out materials, move back and forth. Flexibility is so important. I, which is why I have everything that I might need next to me just in case. I pull out the things that I know I'm going to use or most of the things that I'm going to use and then I decide whether or not I'm going to need something else as I go along and I won't really know until I've started the project. It's not quite the same for oil and acrylic paints. I can always blend down another color um, while I'm working. But with colored pencils, it's a little bit different. You can blend some, but it isn't the same. It doesn't work quite as easily or as readily.
and I'm being sure to, to leave differences in colors, variations, for when I come back with the pencil to build up more detail in the feathers. Oops, sorry, just moving the camera a bit. This is the white. I'm, the paper itself is an off-white and I'm bringing this white in to create a little bit more contrast and then I'll be bringing in grays and browns to create shadow in, in that white hood. And there's the gray. Actually, it's a black pen, pencil, but I'm using it very lightly over the hash marks that I've made with my embossing tool. And this is a brown, this is the brown coming back with that as well. And back with the gray again. Doggies barking in the background. Obviously, somebody is trespassing on our great sidewalk. And I'm using the mineral spirits again to blend out the colors that I brought in. I don't cover everything. I want some of the white to show. But in order to create white, you have to add color for the sake of shadow. And then just leave parts of it light. And the same is true on the crest of the chest. I'm not covering everything, just the shadowed areas. There's more gray along the belly of the bird. I want to add a little bit more embossing here. I want some white of the paper to show through. I'm applying this gray pencil very lightly. Okay, and I am making sure that I have ragged edges there left by the pencil because I want the feathers and the textures of the feathers to be visible. And I'll be adding more as I go along, but I want, I want them to be visible. I want it to look like there are feathers overlaying feathers. I don't want it to be perfectly smooth. I just have a I'm very pleased with how these woodless pencils are working. They move very smoothly. They lay down color very evenly. It's easy to hold back and it's very nice to be able to use the whole side of the pencil uh, or the tip 
and I really haven't had to sharpen anything. But if I want something that's really fine point, I'll use a pencil. And bringing the black and the brownish brown, blackish brown, brownish black. And now I'm going to bring in the Odalis Mineral Spirit, blending in the colors that I've just laid down. Still being careful, I want to leave texture. I don't want it to be smooth. Actually, I find the smooth surfaces the most difficult to create, not with not with acrylics or oils, um, but with colored pencils and um, and watercolor, and not with pastels. I have no problem creating a smooth surface with pastels, but with these others, I do have trouble. And now I'm bringing in the permanent red, working on the face. I'm moving the pencil in the direction of the feathers. I'm erasing away the line that's been there, the pencil line. I don't want it getting in my way. have to shut the door. The puppies are just absolutely vehement about trespassers. So what if it's a public sidewalk? Okay, now I'm using the darker red, bringing in shadow, and depth contrast. And I'm bringing in the mineral spirits, blending in those pencil marks. I have a little bit more mineral spirit on that brush than I had intended, but it'll dry up quickly enough. And if you see the mineral spirit blending out onto the paper away from your image, it will dry away. It'll, it'll evaporate and the mark will be gone. So don't worry about dealing with it. Just let it dry. Because the mineral spirit will spread in. I'm using watercolor paper. It'll spread into any paper. And now I'm applying the yellow. Getting rid of the extra lines from the graphite. And I'm bringing in other lines with the black pencil to create a difference or show you the difference between feathers. So, you know, it's not just one long, wide feather. There are several small feathers. Bringing in my sienna red, sienna brown, excuse me for some more differentiation. And the black, because I have black wings here, black feathers.
And I'm going to add some more embossing because I want a little bit of the white to show through on the edges of those. Anything about working on a pad, you can just turn that paper around and color in any direction you need to. It's something you can do at an easel with a canvas, but it's a lot trickier. And I know I've done it. And sometimes when you're trying to work in a particular direction, it's really hard to work your hands sideways. Painting can be tricky, but it's fun. I stepped away from working with colored pencils for a while. I focused primarily, well, on watercolor and then back to pastels. Pastels are really my favorite medium. And I work with pastel pencils. I've only recently started to add colored pencils with my pastel work. I work with pan pastels and now I'm using colored pencils as well as pastel pencils with that. But then sometimes I just work strictly with the pan pastels and add no pencils. All depends on the project. I'm using the Sienna to add additional feathers. I like to have stray feathers. It, for me, gives the bird a greater look of reality, of realism. I don't want to, I want the feathers to look fluffy and slightly ruffled, even though in reality it may not look like that. That I need to see the different levels of feathers overlapping each other as well. Watch here, see, I made a boo-boo, but I'm not going to try to erase it. I'm just turning it into a stray feather and adding another. My hand was just a little too fast. And bringing in the white, Chinese white pencil from Derwent, the drawing pencils. Almost always it is the strongest and best white pencil to use. Sometimes it doesn't always work on other colored pencils. But it works beautifully on top of these woodless pencils. And I'm adding it still again on top of the Faber-Castell white that I used earlier. Sorry, I forgot to move the camera down so you can't see me working on the face. There we go. Just putting highlights into the feathers on the face, working with the direction of the feathers. And now I'm working on the beak. The beak is light with black markings and a touch of peach, which I'll get in later. Bringing in that brown again 
over that shoulder width. I want to bring up the embossing marks that I laid in. And add some shadows of feathers overlapping feathers. It's all in the detail. And as I said, I, I'm not a super realist, I'm not a hyper realist, I'm not a photo realist. They're all different schools. Um, they all have slightly different philosophies and they require a great deal more patience and a much steadier hand than I have. But I do like it when somebody has to double take and say, oh yes, that's a drawing or a painting. And I don't mind if somebody looks at it and says, oh, that's a drawing or a painting. I mean, after all, that's what it is. But I do get a kick out of a double take. I want very much to try to capture the character. And when you, this is especially possible when you're working on portraits of pets. Pets have attitudes that show through on their reference photos and in reality. And I, more than getting details uh, of the features, it is important to me to get their attitude. Now, to this, <laughs> to me, this goldfinch has angry eyes, as if I'm intruding in it, her space. and keeping her from doing whatever it is that she wants to do because she's looking back at me. Now, of course, that's all made up. I, this is a reference photo I got from wildlife reference photos. And she might have had that attitude with the photographer who was taking the, the picture because I'm sure she spotted him or her. And I'm using the brownish black pencil again, very lightly first. Moving in smooth strokes, follow the grain of the wood. I'm currently working on a different way to apply mineral spirits. I've been doing some research and I'll talk about that. I have another video coming out of a yellow titmouse after this. And my next project will be conducting some experiments with different applications of the odorless mineral spirit and the colored pencils. I look, I'm looking forward to that. I've already started working and I'm really looking forward to what I can produce. And I'm, I'll be sharing it with you in the next two or three weeks. And this is the black making deeper shadows still. I want those creases in the wood to show up. It's always my, been my contention that you can't take a bad photograph of rock formations or wood. You can mess up when you're trying to draw them or paint them, but they make beautiful photographs. And I think if I were a photographer, um, 
I take a decent photo, but I'm not a professional photographer. But if I were, I, I think I would absolutely specialize in rock formations and gnarled trees. They're so beautiful, so interesting. And we're back with the gray and working on the claws. I don't know, I'm pretty sure this is a female. She has some really big claws and it's my understanding, I could be wrong. It is true of hawks. The female hawk is larger and has larger claws than the male. And I, I think probably, and I could be wrong, it might well be true with the other bird, species of birds. So I'm going with this as a female. And that's the peach. My other option in doing this would have been using the brown very lightly and coating over it with a very light layer of the permanent red to create a peach. But I, I, had, I had the pencil, so why not use it? If I didn't have the pencil, that's what I would have done. Putting increases on the skin. They have wrinkles on their claws, just like humans have wrinkles on their hands. There are no feathers on those claws. That's their skin. There we go. That's better. Now I'll be highlighting the wood. Sometimes when I'm doing the wood that a bird is standing on, I make it up because I don't necessarily like the piece of wood or the branch that I'm looking at. So I'll change it and make it up uh, to something I prefer. And back with the sienna. All the colors that are in the branch are colors that I've used on the bird. So they blend in there like one unit. Now I'm going to work on the beak. I'm adding a little peach around the bottom there and the sides. And some white. I'm sorry I didn't bring this down enough. There we go, that's much better. Get a better look at it. So now, my goldfinch is complete, and I thank you very much for having joined me. I hope that you'll try working with colored pencils if you don't already, and you might want to try those woodless pencils. They weren't very expensive, um, and Ashley Nicole, and I bought them through Amazon. And of course, there are all the other wonderful colored pencils that you can use. If you've enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe, just click on that subscribe button and I'll see you again.